Praise be Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Our scripture readings are from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 12, and the Gospel of John chapter 12, verses 24 through 26. Um, we are in the octave of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, remember, octave is eight days, and so it's the eight days following a feast. We uh, are, are familiar with the octave of Christmas, the octave of Easter, but also the church has other octaves, or eight days following a feast day. And, um, and we are in the octave of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So I'm going to talk a little bit about her role as the, the perfect model of a perfect human, really, but the perfect model of holiness in which our Lord comes to us. And so in both readings, um, we have, you know, St. James is telling us that you may be perfect and entire. Um, so there's this idea that as humans, we can reach perfection and we can have um, a wholeness or a completeness, which is what James is talking about by entire, so that you can be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Now we know this, this is always um, in association with our union with Christ. So there is a standard of perfection, there is a, a standard of entire or wholeness, and that standard is Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ says to us, I make all things new. So he is our perfection, not only is he the author of life, but he is the perfection of life. And so we can only find that perfection in him. So St. James tells us that, and then in the Gospel, Jesus is telling us um, in John 12, if any man minister to me, let him follow me, and where I am, there also my minister will be. So this is important. Um, minister really means, it comes from a, the, the root word minus, right? So, um, and minus means less. So a minister is someone who is humble. When Jesus says, let the last be first, if you wish to be um, the master, then serve. So. This is what a minister is. It's someone that is a servant, someone that will um, make themselves less in order to serve and put others as greater. Um, if any man minister to me, so if you want to be my servant, basically, then follow me, right? Lessen yourself. I, we decrease and he increases. We lessen ourselves, and he becomes most important. And then, this is his promise, where I am, there also my minister will be. So we want to be where Christ is. Um, we want to be not only with him now, and where he is now, but we also want to be with him for all eternity. This is a great question when someone says, are you saved? Well, the question there is, are you with Christ now? Because salvation is forever being with Christ. And so if we are with Christ now, then we can safely say that we will be with Christ later. Um, now, of course, we don't know if we will separate ourselves from Christ and during our life, but I'm talking about right now at this moment. If I am with Christ now and I were to die, then there is nothing to make me think that I wouldn't be with him later. Now, there is still purging. There is still perfection and entireness that I need. That's what James is talking about. He says that the trying of your faith will lead to patience. And patience will lead to a perfect work. That perfect work is that you may be perfect and entire. So again, our faith, our profession in Jesus Christ, that we believe that he is Lord, we believe in his teachings, we believe in the teachings of the church, that faith will be tried and should be tried. We are not going to just get to go through life without ever having that tried. We will be shaken. We will have trials. There will be temptations. And we must be patient with those things. The trials of our faith will lead us to the virtue of patience. And patience will lead us to that perfect work. That perfect work, again, is the perfection and the wholeness, the entireness that we have in Jesus Christ. So we need to allow that to start now, become perfect and entire now, so that that, that process won't be so lengthy in purgatory. But there is a purging, there is a purification that is needed so that we can reach complete unity with Jesus Christ. Um, 
I said this in, in one of the other Lexio Divinas, but I think it's very important that grace or that divine life is not a quantity. It's not about how much grace we have. It's about how close we are in unity with Jesus. So the question that we ask ourselves is not, how much grace did I get today? It's how close was I, was, how, how close was I to Jesus today? Because we know that we could do a lot of things. We could pray, we could fast, we could do almsgiving. We could do a lot of things and, and so-called get a lot of grace. And maybe we are doing those things, but maybe we're still not united to Christ the way we need to. This is why the church teaches that we need to have a detachment from sin, because we can't have a closeness or unity with Christ if we are attached to sin. Um, the detachment has to happen first. This is why Jesus will say to us first and foremost, deny yourself, right? Detach from the sin, deny yourself, then pick up your cross and follow me. And these, these are similar to what he's saying now. Um, if any man will, will be my servant, then he must follow me. And in order to follow, we first have to detach, deny ourselves, then pick up the cross, which is the obedience, and then follow him. And, and then we will be where he is. We don't want to make this mistake. There's only kind of two places in life, either where he is or where he isn't. Um, and this is most perfectly, I think, said in, in Acts of the Apostles. I'm not sure which chapter. I think it's chapter 2. But it's when it says that Judas chose his own place. Again, we see in Scripture that there is only two places, either a place with Jesus Christ where he is, are our own place where he is not. So today as we go through our life, the challenge is to be where Jesus is. How can we do that? We need to lessen ourselves. We need to serve Jesus. We need to um, be patient as our, as our faith is tested and never, ever, ever give up the faith. We need to keep the faith, as St. Paul says, run the race, fight the fight. Um, never apostatize, never leave the faith. Um, one of the things in RCIA that is suggested, especially for those that are not baptized, but also for, for the baptized as well to maybe a lesser degree, is that the Christian life must be tested. It must be tried. Um, for someone coming into the church, it is not just a matter of learning the faith and the doctrine and the morals, but, but these things must be tried over a period of time. Um, in this time period, maybe anywhere from one to three years, but it's not enough just to hold the faith. The faith must be tested. It must be put through a fire. And that is what happens to us every single day, every single year, as we continue to have this testing. And the, perfect, the, the, the reason for this is to be perfect. Um, Tertullian, who is one of the church fathers, he talked about that um, man in the image and likeness of God, that when God created man, he already had in mind, of course, the perfection of man, which is Jesus Christ, um, true God and true man, very God and very man. Um, so when, when we see that God is creating man, he already has the ideal um, image of God, the, the Imago Dei. And so when we hear in Genesis that God created man, male and female he created him he's he's creating adam and eve to be um really prefigure jesus christ the foreshadowing of jesus christ who will come and who is the perfect man and who all of us will find our perfection in so it's very beautiful that we have in marriage adam and eve that come together and male and female through marriage coming together are the perfect example of complementarity um, and really are an image or a foreshadowing of Christ and the church. And this is how we find uh, this perfection in this entirety that James is talking about. The individual soul first finds his connection to Christ through the church, through becoming a body, become, becoming a part of the body of Christ. And so if we are going to be perfect and entire, then we must be perfectly conformed to the image of God and the Imago Dei in perfection is Jesus Christ himself. So first and foremost, we become a member of Christ's body and then are more and more conformed to 
Jesus Christ as we grow and as our, as our faith is tested. Another example of this is a man and a woman in marriage who perfectly try to live out that image of God through Christ and his uh, bride, the church. And then we also see the example not only of Adam and Eve in marriage, how they are witnessing the Imago Dei, um, Christ and his church, but also Abel. Abel was, um, we call him in the Mass, Abel the Just, and Abel was offering a sacrifice. So he is also a type of Christ. Um, and remember, he was betrayed by his brother, um, Cain, just as Jesus was betrayed by his own uh, mankind, all of us, um, particularly even his, his own race, the Jews. And so even in Abel, we see um, the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ and also the foreshadowing of holy orders, a person that will truly take on and be ordained to be in persona Christi. So as we strive for this perfection, this entirety, we have so many um, gifts. We have the perfect um, example of Jesus Christ himself in scripture. We have the ability to unite with Jesus Christ by baptism and becoming a part of his body by joining the church. We have the, the example of the sacrament of marriage in which man and woman witness um, Jesus Christ and his church um, in the image of God. And we have the example of holy orders, um, especially in the priesthood and, and bishops, who will actually then model for us in persona Christi and continue the mission of Christ. Thank you for joining me for Lexio on the go. Please take the time to visit linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And we ask Mary's intercession for our life, that we will be more and more conformed to the likeness of her Son, just as she was.